hell on. Alrighty, hopefully this is fourth of four. Thanksgiving part four. Oh, come on. If it turns this way, it looks like it's off that way. <laughs> Think I'm dehydrated? It shouldn't be. I do good on water, have been anyway. They looked out across the fields for a time. Then John said, Dad and I used to go out and shoot doves out there in Ed's pasture every year. He and Ed would always get up a group of men and we'd make a day out of it. He was never much of one for gardening or farming, but he surely did love to hunt and fish. Luke took a swallow of his coffee and asked, Do you know what sort of arrangements your father would have wanted? The other man nodded his head. Yes, I know what he wanted. We were both of the same mind about such things. He hated the whole funeral industry. Always said he wanted to be buried and embalmed in a plain pine box in the bare ground. Of course, in Florida, you're required to have a concrete vault and all that crap. So he told me long ago to just cremate him and scatter his ashes. It's what I'd want. It's what I want myself to be burned and scattered out right here on the farm. Luke buttoned up his coat and said, Cremation is going to be a problem right now, John. Crematories use natural gas, and right now that's strictly rationed. The government isn't allowing it to be used for cremation, so this has created something of a stink with people who can't get their loved ones handled the, the way they want them, but it's the way it is. John sighed. Well, I suppose that's to be expected. Just hadn't thought about the mechanics of it. Reckon he'll have to be buried. He wouldn't have wanted that. He did have a small life insurance policy to cover expenses. But what with the insurance industry washed out to sea, I don't know if we'll be able to get a payoff on that policy or not. I wonder what a burial plot is going for these days. Going to be a mighty expensive, going to be mighty expensive no matter what I do. They stared out across the fields for a time, then again John spoke with resolution. No. The state be damned. I'm the master of Horn Farm, and I will not commit my father to some boneyard that he'd have hated. The state can take a flying leap. We'll bury him right here. There's a holly tree in the back pasture that he'd like to sit under in the fall of the year. We'll put him there. I'd give him a funeral pyre if we needed, didn't need the wood so bad. Reckon I'd better call over to Mike's and see if I can get Jake or Steve to help me dig the hole. Six by six by three is a lot of dirt. The doctor looked at him for a moment and then said, I haven't dug a hole that big in a long, long time, but I think my hands will still fit the handle of a spade. Why don't we keep this in the family, so to speak? Right on. Nah, that's a shorty. Let's just continue for a few minutes. Um, yeah, comments on that one. Uh, now, in Missouri, at least in a lot of counties, I'll put it that way, you need to check with your county ordinances, but, um, you know, if you have land, you can do what you want. So, you know, we've done that. We have our own family garden plot, shall we say. Um, many people have done that. My daughter had a horrible months-long miscarriage. I'll try to tell the story. I, I take back, I took, I took back about all the bad things I said about Facebook once upon a time because I found out after several years that the page that my daughter and I had worked on put hours and hours and hours into just to work through the grief it was still on Facebook it's the only place, uh, place that I could um, access it, found out it was still there so Charity Rest Horan, if you ever have anybody that loses a child <clears throat> a lot of music there and a lot of links a lot of thoughts, scriptures, quotes maybe I'll do a video on it that would be pretty cool that would be a tough one. Um, but after we bought our place, we found out that there used to be... Well, let me bring up the old uh, <laughs> thing here. Okay, so 10 acres is square. And at the southeast corner, there used to be a road that came straight like that. Well, this was a pretty steep hill to get up to that road so they brought the road over like this 
onto our land. Um, it used to go like this, so they, they, they brought the road like this. So we had this little plot of land on the south side of the road, and so we made it. And yeah, it has to be fenced. There's, there's laws that said you, you, can, you can dig a hole and have your own funeral. You don't need a, you, can, you know, friend, a friend uh, made a casket, and uh, he had a cabinet shop, so he made a casket, and we had the funeral, and my, I almost lost my daughter that day. She about died. Thank heavens for thinking outside the box and having junk laying around because she had a, a stroller, a kid stroller. And she was, you know, she put on a lot of weight because of the miscarriage. And she was, but she fit in it. She, she said, get that. We use that as a stretcher to get her into the house. And I got her, a, I had oxygen, got her on oxygen and saved her. I don't, I don't know. So don't think about that right now. So, uh, so we have our own, you know, that's the only person there so far. We have a child buried in Kansas, too. Eight-month-old, eight-and-a-half-pound boy, stillbirth, home birth. So, um, the rules are fence it. Now, interesting thing is, this is how cool... Some of the hospitals are here. Not Mercy. There is no Mercy in Mercy Hospital. It used to be St. John's, but long story, I won't go into that. Um, but she had to get, my daughter had to go to the hospital. She went to Bolivar. They got the baby out, and they were going to, you know, turn it over to the mortician, mortuary, and we were going to have to go sign for it and go through all the jump through all these hoops and whatnot. And we just said, hey, the baby belongs to us, belongs to the family, and we want to deal with it. And the hospital was like, okay. You know, they said, this is, uh, this is the first time we've done this, but it probably won't be the last time. So we set a precedent. <laughs> Yeah, brought the baby home and had a, had our own funeral, and it was quite quite interesting. So, yeah, so that is one cool thing about Missouri. You don't have to, you know, if, if you want to have a funeral pyre, I don't believe in that. You know, cremation is not a. I don't believe it's a, at all any biblical or Christian or, you know, Hebraic type of funeral. Funeral pyres is kind of a pagan thing to do. What are you going to do with the last resurrection when you're supposed to be reconstituted? You know, resurrected. The resurrection of the last day, you're, you're dust in the ocean and dust over the 500,000 acres of farmland. But shoot them up in a rocket and, you know, dump it out over the an urn from the airplane and all the other things that people do with their loved ones. Ugh. I'm sorry. Just dig a hole, stick me in it, call it good. In this case, instead of Buzzards got to eat same as worms. Worms got to eat same as buzzards. So deal with it. All right. So there you go. This is uh, Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you're the remnant. Come here where you can be free enough to do whatever you want for the most part, as long as you don't hurt anybody or do anything stupid. Treat other people like you would want to be treated. It's basically uh, the rules, which is biblical. So. Somebody works for you, pay them. You know, pay, treat somebody like you would want to be treated. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. All right, that's it. This is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this. You are the remnant. Good night. Be thankful for everything. Be thankful for what God has blessed you with, and be thankful enough to give some of it away cheerfully. Be cheerful. I'll tell you what. Uh, Mormons and Amish got it all over us. Christians, you know. So, anyway, I appreciate everybody that's been helping me. And uh, it's been a long, long, lonely road. Hard, long, lonely road. And uh, be, be praying for a gal, uh, Chris. 
Chris and Joe, Joe and Chris. Ozark off-grid family. Chris is uh, 